Good afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday afternoon, March 6th, and we have a typical uh, typical active weather pattern here in the United States. This actually goes beyond the United States. Much of the world is seeing active weather right now. Although the weather pattern is typical, we are breaking records nonetheless. The East Coast is under an unseasonably warm air mass influenced by high pressure off on the southeast coast of the United States. Some maps indicate the high pressure is further to the north. Temperatures are soaring into the 80s over much of the East Coast. Temperatures in the 80s is far north. Even New Jersey, may some areas may get into the 80s over there, Maryland. Temperatures in the low to mid 80s for North Carolina. Temperatures may even hit 90 degrees in Georgia. That might be the hot spot. But we've already seen temperatures hit the low 90s in Texas. The day is not over yet there. Temperatures are still going up for South Texas, Central Texas, perhaps even areas further to the north. We also have high humidity in Texas. Temperature dew points are in the mid and upper 60s. Dew point of 69 degrees in Corpus Christi, Texas. Brownsville, Texas, 2.69. Houston, Texas, 2.68 degrees. A definite summery feel to the weather down there. And temperatures are also breaking records in New Orleans, Louisiana. Record high for today in New Orleans is 84 degrees. The forecast high is 82 degrees. And tomorrow we're going to see much of the same. Also, very strong thunderstorm development is expected to develop just south of this strong front which is situated over the Missouri-Arkansas border, possibly even tornadoes. Storm Prediction Center has put that area in Arkansas and even extreme south Missouri on a scale of 1 to 5 at the the risk of severe weather is a 3, which is about 30%, anywhere between 25 to 35% chance of seeing severe weather within a 25-mile radius. In this situation, that includes the possibility for tornadoes. There's also the possibility for severe weather, even in Baltimore, Maryland. We're also seeing the potential for record warmth in Baltimore, Maryland as well, including Washington, D.C. This is uh, the strong storm system, or at least a typical... In a certain way, it's a typical storm system. The low-pressure area is developing this afternoon off in the Oklahoma panhandle at the same time that a short wave is moving from the northwest into that area, which is basically a piece of energy, a pocket of cold air, as some define it in the upper atmosphere, which is going to be triggering lots of precipitation and lots of different stuff. That's going to be colliding together tonight, moving over into the middle Mississippi Valley, then off to the northeast. Chicago is going to be affected by this because we're going to be on the northwest side of the storm track, which means the precipitation over here will be falling as snow. Usually these types of storms, as we pointed out in the past, they have a bullseye of 6 to 12 inches in the Midwest when you have Gulf moisture colliding with an area of deep low pressure and Arctic air. We're a little bit short on the Arctic air, and there will be some uh, rain that gets mixed in with the snow. Snowfall accumulations for the Chicago area are only expected to be between 1 and 3 inches. Some say up to 4 inches, and then other places in the Midwest, 3 to 6 inches. The amount of QPF in the Chicago area is about 3 tenths of an inch. So if we were dealing with a 10 to 1 snow to water ratio, that would be about 3 inches. But we're not really dealing with a 10 to 1 snow to water ratio because there's another... Uh, variable that's coming into play here says the National Weather Service of Chicago about 3 a.m. or so a dry slot might be moving into the upper atmosphere right over the Chicago area that's over the Chicago area to the north and west of Chicago this dry slot may not affect those areas <clears throat> but what this dry slot's going to do is it's going to cause the clouds the upper half of the clouds are going to dissipate what this means is that the only precipitation we're going to be getting is going to be coming from the lower half of the clouds. In this case, the lower half of the clouds will likely be producing precipitation because the, it is a saturated air mass. The only issue is, is that the air temperatures of those clouds or the water temperature, air, whatever the, the temperatures are 8 degrees below 0 Celsius, which is approximately, uh, what would that be Fahrenheit, 27 degrees about 27 or 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And the thing is, is that that's not cold enough. Generally speaking, that's not cold enough for snow to form. 
uh, believe it or not. The ideal situation for snow is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. If we have a temperature of 14 degrees Fahrenheit, we would be looking at snow. Uh, some say it even should be colder than that to get real snow. Uh, therefore, there's a good chance that the precipitation will be changing over to possibly freezing drizzle after 3 a.m., but it's a little bit questionable right now if we'll be seeing snow or uh, freezing drizzle or some sleet. Either way, three inches would be a little bit too high, probably. The area is probably going to get about an inch or two. We do have a winter weather advisory. Now, the reason why we have a winter weather advisory, in fact, for the Chicago area is not really because of the snow. It's because of the potential for ice that may be occurring tomorrow morning. Now, the potential is quite low because, generally speaking, temperatures have to be 28 degrees or colder for freezing rain to accumulate on roadways. Temperatures have to be only 32 for them to accumulate on bridges and overpasses, but on the roadways, 28 degrees. Also, this time of the year, it has to be night. If the sun is out, then it has to be extreme bitter cold before we'll get any type of precipitation that accumulates on the roadways uh, if it's falling down as liquid. So, but nonetheless, uh, we do have, you know, for the beginning of tomorrow, there could be some slushy accumulation on the roadways for the Chicago area. As a result, the National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory. It's in effect for the much of the Midwest. This storm then moves off to the northeast. Colder air comes in, and then we go on to something much more interesting. So we head into the next storm system that moves across the country later in the week. The GFS and the European computer model have a major machlokus in regards to the upcoming storm later in the week. In fact, the European computer model, according to the National Weather Service of Chicago, indicates that there's actually two potential storms, one of them coming on Thursday, one on Friday. If you actually look at the model, it seems like Friday will be the the main thing. But there's a big machlokus between the GFS model and the European computer model in regards to Friday and to Shabbos to that storm system. One of them has the storm system moving up the east coast. The other one has it moving through the Midwest. So either way, it does look to me like it's a little bit further south, a little bit too far south for it to reach the Chicago area, uh, at least for it to bring its heaviest precipitation through the Chicago area. That has not stopped the forecasters, however, from forecasting uh, significant snow possible for this upcoming Friday or so, uh, maybe Thursday night into Friday, possibly even Friday night. That's a possibility. We could see some snow accumulation. It's not so clear. Uh, there's a fix fix to tell you the truth. That people on the East Coast, however, they should snow lovers and weather enthusiasts, winter weather enthusiasts, uh, should really monitor the situation next weekend because, according to one of the computer models, it's a monster storm, an explosive storm that's going to be moving up the East Coast and. This could be a, a big one, a very dynamic storm. The Baltimore National Weather Service is calling the, the it a potential for a dy- quite a dynamic storm system that could be developing this weekend. And you don't even need the weather forecast to tell you that. If you just look on the weather maps, the models from the European computer model. But for today... Much of the country is enjoying warm weather, and the East Coast will continue to do so for tomorrow as we battle out winter and even some summer weather that starts to move in from the south. Those storms have been, says the Branson National Weather Service, Branson, Missouri, those uh, storms have been stronger than what the computer models, (coughs) excuse me, indicated. And that will bring this... Uh, podcast to an end thank you for listening I wish everyone a good day